All right, hello everybody. Today, talking about um, eye, ear, nose, and throat's emergency. We're going to split it into two parts. The first part's going to be just the eyes. Second part will be the rest of it. Uh, and again, there's some emergencies that we have to deal with. And so, with that being in mind, first and foremost, I should maybe flip this around to where... There. It's nice and big. Imagine that. All right. So, let's talk about the, the, the eye emergencies here. And... Um, and again, remember that the head and neck is uh, is a lot of our sensory organs, and uh, and so there's uh, of course the really important structures there, uh, your brain, of course, but but the, you get all the inputs. The, the eyes and the ears are the two big ones, okay? And so again, your eyes are the organs of sight, and they gather, they light, and they focus on the receptors that are in the back of the eye. And uh, again, it, the their the orbits protect the protect the eye sockets uh, again it protects it from a certain amount of damage not all of it though frontal impacts obviously you're not going to get uh, any protection on it uh, the eyes are controlled by six extraocular muscles and remember we talked about that with the cranial nerves a lot of the cranial nerves uh, three up here the four in the inside the six on the outside these are the guys that control the eyes okay uh, eyelashes again they're sensors as well as because they protect the eyes when foreign substances is Especially like your dust is coming in. Uh, that's why when when you're doing a test to see if somebody's truly conscious, if they are truly conscious and you kind of flick their eyelashes, these guys um, again, it, it, it's a reflective action, and so it's going to close on you like that. So if somebody doesn't have that reflective action, they've got some serious neurological issues going on, or a serious suppression of it. And there are glands that the oil that secrete sebum onto the eyelids that help keep them soft and pliable. Um, and again, the, the conjunctiva is the cover and protects the surface of the eye. And then each eye has uh, lacrimal ducts, tear ducts. Okay, they store the tears and then they produce in the glands and, and they drain out. By the way, these glands also drain out through the nose as well. So when you start crying, you start getting the sniffles. Well, there's a reason for that. Again, because again, they're 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 made to design that, that that's another outlet from these areas. Okay. Um, the internal anatomy of the eye, again, is the globe. It's got two distinctive filled cavities. It's got the the the, the posterior cavity, anterior cavity. The vitreous humor, that is the clear jelly-like fluid that, that fills the entire vitreous cavity, okay? Uh, and again, the, the front portion of the anterior cavity has got your lens, and it contains the aqueous humor, okay? The portion behind the eye lens, again, that's your posterior cavity. Uh, the aqueous humor is a water-like fluid. The, the vitreous humor is more of the jelly type solution to it uh, and again both chambers do have that aqueous humor in it uh, again the innermost layer of the eye is the retina the outside is the choroid and the outermost is the sclera uh, the sclera is the tough fibrous protective tissue quote unquote the light the white of their eye and the cornea is that transparent curved uh, lens of the eye if you will and not per se lens but it's the, the the concave covering of the eye. They can actually take these out and 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 micro shave them, uh, and they can also uh, they can also replace them or or, or, or implant them into someone else. Uh, again, the uh, the choroids, the highly vascular tissue. Again, the tissues, nutrient tissues that supply the iris, and then the iris is the, the colored portion of the eye. Uh, behind the pupil is the lens. That's why I didn't want to use the term lens, because, again, it's actually where that focuses the incoming light image onto the retina. Uh, your ciliary muscles surround the lens, and it allows you to focus. Uh, and, again, these are autonomic system uh, functions. And the retina contains nerve endings, and, of course, that what transmits the image into the back. Uh, rods and cones, uh, the rods are the... They, they, they are effective in dim light, where your cones uh, are, are more effective in the bright light situation. And you start to lose your rods, by the way, as you age. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the older folks at night have a little bit more t difficult time driving. Okay, uh, and again, this is the the standard thing that you see at the eye doctor or the eye chart. There, uh, nothing. Um, again, and make sure you kind of know where these structures are. Um, and and again, so and, uh, so you can get a sty. Uh, it's an infection of the eyelid where it blocks up the oil gland and uh, are located on a lash line, uh, and then the little small pustule lumps there. And it resolves usually when the gland is it, relieved. Usually, a warm soak and a topical antibiotic will do it. Uh, yet, squeezing them, they don't 
you know, as much as you'd love to say that it works, uh, it, again, that all it really does is it breaks loose the whatever the, the inflammation is there. Uh, and again, uh, nothing really there that we want to talk about, but the conjunctivus. Uh, and then we've all heard of this one. Uh, it's usually uh, more commonly referred to as pink eye. Extremely um, uh, transmittable to people. Uh, again, yeah, if you get this, and it's usually, by the way, one of the, the bigger causes of it is when you improperly clean yourself and then you touch uh, fecal matter to the eye. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, it, it, and it's not always, but unfortunately, if it does get in the eye, it's easily transmitted at that point. Uh, red and itching, it, it's more irritating than anything. Usually, they use a topical antibiotic on it. The eye gets all red. It gets all puffy. Yuck. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, it, it can be, uh, uh, you can have an infection or inflammation of conjunctiva, uh, which is con conjunctiva. Conjunctivus again. In uh, these guys is usually viral, and usually the trim you, you relieve the symptoms, and usually they get better on these guys. Uh, tergerium. Uh, this guy is a is a conjunctival condition. Is get raised whelp. Uh, wedge-shaped gross in the conjunctiva. They're usually non-cancerous, uh, and again, and it's visible with the white of the sclera. And uh, common in people that have outdoor exposure, sun, wind, and dust is is these guys have that. Uh, your iritis or uvitis is again, it's a it's a swelling or irritation to the middle eye. Uh, it's patients with autoimmune disease really get this kind of quickly and easily, and they and it swells the eye. It can affect one or both eyes. It creates a lot of uh, blurred vision, uh, a lot of pain with that. And uh, they they get floaters. They they get very they're very photosensitive. You try to shine a light in their eye, it's just not going to happen. And again, it protect them from the light. A little bit of anesthesia. The core uh, usually they'll use eye drops with the corticos steroids in them uh, and I will tell you I've had this a few times ow it, it, yeah it does hurt uh, the herpes simplex virus or keratitis uh, when you inflame the cor cornea from herpes simplex uh, again uh, it usually will cause corneal blindness and for that reason uh, they have to do a corneal transplant on these guys but you get a lot of pain you get a lot of photophobia uh, it, again it really hurts and, and again one of the biggest things that we get herpes simplex in the eye is is yes um, you can go blind from it. Now, I have personally had this one. Um, again, herpes zoster. Uh, again, uh, it, 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 the shingles, basically, it gets into the eye. And uh, it, it, what it does is it follows the trigeminal nerve into the eye. And then uh, I will tell you that uh, 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 you can actually destroy the eye. Uh, the, the lesions actually appear on the cornea. Uh, I do have a small lesion on the back of mine. From when we when I got shingles and it and it got into the eye, uh, nearly lost the eye. I had to put drops in my eye every hour for 48 hours. I, 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 that means I was up for two days. It was like being on the ambulance all over again, except worse. Um, so the corneal ulcers again, uh, it's an infection of the cornea, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, it's uh, it's a serious and actually a sight threatening condition. They get a painful red eye. They get tearing uh, again, really light sensitive on these guys, and uh, it get, we treat the. It, you got to figure out which one it is, whether it's a viral infection or a bacterial infection, and the the ophthalmologist absolutely has. To see, by the way, the ophthalmologist needs to see all of these. By the way, uh, because uh, the, again, it, it does threaten the sight of the individual uh cellulitis again these guys uh it's the tissue around the eye gets really warm swollen the eye itself is not involved but with all that swelling it interferes with sight and it hurts uh, uh, to a certain degree go to the right here hyphema and this is when you get a collection of blood in the chamber uh when i had the herpes zoster I also ended up with some hyphema, and uh, again, and and what happened was is blood was leaking into the eye, uh, and again, uh, uh, being a diabetic, also that doesn't help, and 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 it, again, it's very sight threatening because they have to make sure that the bleeding stops. If the bleeding does not stop, again, it could irreparably damage the eye. Glaucoma. These are a group of uh, eyesight threatening conditions. It usually increases with it increases the interocular pressure, which damages the optic nerve and then this, and then it blinds the patient by they increase pressure on there and they have ways of taking uh they they actually can go in and drain some of that 
that flew it off in an emergency situation. Uh, yes, sticking a needle in somebody's eye, it is a it is a possibility. Nothing that we're going to do. Okay, this is an ophthalmologist that's going to do this. Um, so there's a, a acute closure glaucoma, or there's open angle glaucoma, uh, and again, those those are your two big ones there. And, uh, it, and usually it, it puts pressure, and then it, that's how it leads to the blindness, is it puts pressure on that optic nerve. Um, and again, open angle glaucoma, that you get, usually you start to lose a little bit of vision, and then you can develop, develop severe pain with the angle closure glaucomas. And uh, again, the treatment is to reduce the, um, the interocular pressure. They can go in surgically and, and begin a, a draining process of that. Uh, and again, but it's very important that if they have those symptoms, again, they can lose the eye with this. They really need to be seen by the ophthalmologist. And yes, at the emergency room, they really do need to do that. Now, your cataract is, uh, again, it's a clouding of the lens or the eye, uh, and usually, by the way, they can remove cataracts, uh, and again, ultraviolet rays is probably the big one. Diabetics get this a lot, uh, and, and then, again, they use, they do a surgical removal of the cataract. That's how they treat it, and this would be an example of the cataract and how it looks, and again, it, it, it effectually, it will blind the person, but they can correct the vision with this. Uh, optic neuritis, uh, again, inflammation of the optic nerve, uh, usually Usually, again, autoimmune diseases, Herbie Zoster, uh, again, drug toxicity can cause it, multiple sclerosis can cause it, and again, they lose vision in a single eye for about an hour, um, uh, changing the pupillary reaction to light, and again, uh, so they're going to have some, some cha vision changes, and it usually returns to normal in about two to three weeks without treatment. Uh, corticosteroids can be used to increase that and, and, may, and make it a lot faster to, to recover from it, and it, you again, the eye doctor absolutely has to go see this. Uh, papilledema, again, these are not conditions per se, but they're, they're swelling of the optic disc secondary to intracranial pressure. Uh, again, and it creates uh, the same thing. It's creating pressure on the optic nerve and the optic roof, and it's usually caused by... Um, uh, either trauma or, or, or tumors or, or some sort of stroke or an infection. Or, or again, if they're a hydrocephalic kid, they can have these as well. Um, so again, uh, the, the central retina artery occlusion, again, they're going to see a, a clot in the uh, diabetics get this a lot. And they, 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 uh, patients that just had surgery or, or a valvular disease, uh, in and out of, um, of AFib actually can cause this too as well. And uh, again, it, it actually blocks up the blood vessels too there. And again, it usually has one eye that's affected and it lasts for a few seconds to a minute, but the blockage can be permanent. And again, uh, again, massaging the eye and fibrinolytics is the treatment for that. Okay. And again, this needs to be done at the emergency room and it needs to be done by an ophthalmologist, uh, a trained person. Um, again, if uh, you got a, a vein occlusion, uh, the same deal with the with the arterial occlusion, and again, a very common with your high blood pressure patients, your diabetics, and it's very similar. Uh, if they've got a glaucoma, they, they, they're probably going to have some type of, of vein occlusions as well with this. Um, again, uh, retinal detachment, the actual retina comes off the back of the, the eye wall. Uh, trauma is a big one. They, they'll see floaters in their eyes, little white or black spots that will complain of seeing that. And then bright flashes of light in their peripheral vision. Again, uh, uh so again, and by the way, anybody can get a retinal detachment. It can happen just like this, okay, especially as you get older. Uh, again, you'll get shadow blindness in a, in a visual field, and again, this is this is treated surgically. They go in and they and they repair that 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 retinal detachment. Uh, one last thing is is if you get paralysis uh, again with the herpes zoster, and I'm going to break it out here to the computer. I think I've got the picture in here. Um, uh, let me stand by here. Well, unfortunately, guys, I can't find that picture, uh, but I will tell you again, it, it's a, I'll, I'll definitely have it by the time we get to class. Uh, and I will tell you that the, um, it, it's very swollen. Uh, if you're getting shingles in the eye, guys, it can actually paralyze the nerves on the outside. And you can have these nerve paralysis in diabetics or, or people with high blood pressure as well. Uh, stroke conditions can also do that. Uh, and they'll have they'll have the complaint of double vision. Um, literally, I had to wear an eye patch for nearly a year uh, when I had this condition. And uh, uh, again, I can see fine out of one. I was trying to do two eyes. I was seeing two of everything. And so it was really weird.
All right, we're going to stop here, and we'll start back up on the on the slideshow. See you guys on the next one.